search for a man named Jim Sonnet. And the legends folks tell may be true. Most call him gunman and killer. He's my son, who I hardly knew. I raised Jim's boy from the cradle. Till the day he said to me, I have to go find my father. And I reckoned that's how it should be. So we ride, Jim's boy and me. Son. Sure. You men got a long way to go. Well, I hope not. We just put a mighty long ride behind us. Yeah, we're looking for somebody. You lawmen? Nope. We're looking for my son, James Sonnet. Oh, Jim Sonnet. Uh, Sonnet, he was here about, uh, oh, not more than a month ago. He was? Well, where did he go? What, what were his plans, do you know? Well, I can't rightly say. He didn't talk much. He around here three, four days before we even got to know his name. James hung around this town three or four days? That's right. He kind of took a liking to us. Town liked him, too. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Peebles. He's my paw. Well, I never knew him, but we've been looking for him for a long time now. Matter of fact, yeah, I guess you more all be... Real glad when you find him. Oh, no women folk. He, he, Jim's our only kin. Oh. Well, it's a shame you were might late getting here. But I'm real nice to see you all together again. Make a real nice family. Well, much obliged for your news. We'll be back and see you a little later as soon as we get some fodder for Seth. <laughs> well, I'd see to your horses. <laughs> Fellow looked mighty strong and healthy, all this. A real fine specimen, kid. Best to come along in some time. Yeah, the old fellow's got a lot of sand and sewage in him yet. Uh, It'll be good for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Yeah, they got any other special qualifications, all this? Best in the world. They ain't got no kin. At least none that they can find. I don't suppose nobody will be looking for them much. why James would hang around a pest hole like this for three or four days. No, it's not much of a town. Folks seem nice enough. And that stable man was pretty friendly, wasn't he? Boy, there's a big difference between friendliness and a galloping jawbone. <laughs> well, he spoke good about Paul, anyway. Maybe. But he was a whole lot better at asking questions than he was in giving the answers. Wonder what's holding up our stakes. They waiting for the spring roundup or something? <laughs> We'll back you, Virgil. Ah, uh, here we are. Uh, I'll be a dollar and a half. You got something to say? You dropped two dollars on the floor. You dropped them. They can't see it makes much difference either way. These are American dollars. They got stars all around them, like the flag. 
and the American Eagle. Men ought to have respect for that. Well, sir, nobody's got no more respect for a dollar than me. But you dropped them on the dirty floor. You wouldn't drop the flag on the floor, would you? No, and I wouldn't try to pay for a steak and a beer with it, neither. Ah, uh, mister, it's plain you haven't got any respect for the law. I'm going to take you over to the judge. Oh, now, hold on just a minute. This is crazy. You dropped that money on the floor. That's Aiden and abetting. Now you're going to go along, young fella. Say, you've been sampling too much of your own scamper juice behind that bar. I'm the sheriff here. Now, I'm ordering you to go along to see the judge. Well, now, if you're a sample of the law in this place, I'll just pass up the invite. Much obliged. Oh, that's another charge against you. Resisting a lawman. All right, Grandpa, we better go on over to the judge and straighten this out. We're just getting in deeper. No, sir, it's just plain out and out bushwhacking, boy. Ten horned sheriff like this in cahoots with a shirt tailed judge, and they'll find you ten dollars just for trying to spit up wind. Now, that was a real bad idea, making a move to draw on the law. I was making a move to stand up. You got the law again, Matt? You men saw them try to draw on me. Go on, get their guns. Mr. If I'd have been a fixing to draw, they'd be reading your last will and testament now. No brag, just fact. Go on, get a move. The judge ain't hardly gonna believe how many laws you two busted. Come on. I can't hardly believe it. No, sir. I can't hardly believe it about these two fine, upstanding-looking men. Well, I could add more charges, Your Honor, but I figure on the Sabbath we ought to temper justice with mercy. You know, I, I don't usually hold court on a Sunday, but I do believe in a defendant's right to have a fast hearing. I'll just get up here on the bench, and we can settle this matter with no more bother. Mr. Peebles, why don't you tell us what the fine is, and we'll pay up and get out of here. Oh, no, son. You ain't pled guilty or not yet. And I have to make my finding. We have to make this hearing real legal like. Well, this here court is now in session. Honorable Judge Arvis Peebles presiding. Get your hats off. I have to ask you, first off, do you want a jury trial? Or are you willing to toss yourself on the mercy of this court? We'll throw ourselves on the mercy of the court. Well, now, that's a real wise decision, son. Well, I reckon there's uh, no need to hear the charges and the evidence. You all heard them before. You ready for me to pass sentence? Sentence? Well, we figured you are just going to fine us. Oh, no, son, no. See, I don't hold with fining. A man pays a fine, and likely as not, he'll just go on out and commit the same crime again. See, I believe in making a man do a little time. It teaches him a real good lesson. So I'm just going to give you both a couple of little sentences. 30 days each, case closed. <laughs> Men, you just gather up them prisoners and follow me. All right, Hack, load them into the buckboard. What's the trouble with walking? The jail's right over there. It is that, but you ain't going there. See, Mr. Stark there, he runs our prison labor camp. Hack will take you out to it. So that's how you work it, huh? Catch men drifting through your town and you toss them in a slave labor camp. Oh, now, Mr. Sonnet, you're awful fast to jump into bad conclusions. <laughs> you're just going to be working for the railroad. Move. and a kid. Two more miles to feed out of the rations this greasy sack outfit gives us. And I've got shrunk already. Here they are, Gid. Get down and stand to attention. On a double. 
You men are now in an outfit that's run on a strict military order. Because you're going to be doing important work for your country. You're going to be doing something helpful and worthwhile for a change. Now, you're going to help dig a tunnel through that mountain for the new railroads coming along. Well, you and that Stephen Judge pocket the money the railroad pays you. All right, you grizzle heels and sage rats, line up for work. Yeah. You all right, Grandpa? Don't worry none about me, boy. Just one more score to settle with these birds. You got off lucky, old man. He'll string you up for half of that. Be quiet, you swine. Hey, you. What are you doing now? Get in line. I guess you forgot, Mr. Stark. <laughs> I'm you, you Benson. But my time is up. I'll be going, I'll be going home this morning. Well, you and Benson. Do you know that your pants ain't been properly washed? It doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm going home. Yeah, now, ordinarily, that'd be a hundred lashes. But I don't figure you'd hold up. So I'm going to be lenient. I'm just going to give you another 30 days. No! Twice my time. Hoop, two, three, four. Oh, that is right. Two, three, four. Oh, two, three, four. Oh. You promised. I, I, I helped you. I told you when the others were trying to escape. If you should have known better, only lucky ones who ever get out of here are them that die. You hardly blame the fella for trying every way to get out. He don't sound like he's been too long to go. He's a snake. Yeah, well, let he without sin cast the first stone, but not this one. I'm all right. Where are you going? I'm going to help him. Look, this is a job for a horse. And he can't take much of it. He'll take it, just like the rest of them. <laughs> no, no. Well, we're going to have to smooth some of the humps out of your ornery hide. Now, hold it in your neck and get back on the business end of that slammer there. Ready to blow. All right, everybody out. We're going to blast. Come on. Come on, out with you. Hey, get away from me.
Seems like you could have figured some way to get out of here by now. We figured an escape once, but Huey sneaked off and told Stark. Well, I think that if he hadn't, maybe you might have, Alfie. What are you saying, Pickett? Well, look at the way your beef is piled. You got legs clean out of the seat of your trousers, yet all you get is nice little easy jobs, like stringing fuse. Funny. Oh! They're playing right into their hands. Squabbling among yourselves, mistrusting each other. We gotta hang close together. Like the man says, we'll all hang separate. Well, at least I don't have to bunk down next to this bloody hay burner. One of these nights he's gonna flop over on me and then he'll have to mail me to the bone orchard. In an envelope. Hey, can you unlock all these things? Yes. <sighs> See, I took note of Stark and his guns all is stuck in the same place for cover when they blast the tunnel. Well, I figure tomorrow we might do a little surprise blasting. You get these leg irons off and the rest of us, while I work out a little cow geography in the dirt right here. Same as always. What's the hold up? Don't come out! It's a slow charge. Might blow any time. so much, you're going to lead the parade right over to your friend the judge. Get going. Forward, march! Release in full. His pay from the railroad, too. Come on. Stopping the tunnel is going to ruin the whole town. Mr. Peebles, you're just finding out something you should have known as a smart judge. Men can stand a lot of injustice. What really hurts is justice. But you're lucky. You got your hides left. Yeah, maybe you'll get started in the new line of work. I wrote that letter to General Kearney. And when he gets here, he just might put you to work on that railroad tunnel. Oh, you like that? All that fresh air and good exercise?
If they don't believe me when I get back to my outfit, I'm going to tell them to ask Gerald Kearney. You do that. <laughs> me and the boys want to say we're very much obliged, Mr. Sonnet. You know, the first time I saw you, I called you an old codger. <laughs> no need to apologize for that. First time I seen you, I said, well, I wouldn't trust him no further than I could throw a bull upwind. And you know, after seeing you take them locks apart, my way of thinking ain't changed none either. You riding west with us? No, we're headed north. That's the way we was aimed when we had this little delay. Well, pip pip. Pip. Pip pip. Good luck, Mr. Sonnet. Dear Lord, we saw your justice here, your power to set men free. Our trust in you sustains our search. Help guide us, Jeff and me.